Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the difference between static stretching and eccentric training if your goal is to increase flexibility. So here's a simple quiz. Uh, pause the video if you want to think about it for a second, and we will get back to this in a moment. Hey, real quick, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications when I release future videos, and uh, share this with your anatomy-loving friends. They might appreciate it as well. And hey, be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I will show you a yoga pose variation, um, a, a variation to a really, 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 really common yoga pose that is perhaps a better approach uh, to a forward fold. So uh, be sure to stick around to catch that at the end of the video. All right, let's get back to the quiz. So the question is, which method is better for improving hamstrings flexibility? Is it static stretching or eccentric training? Well, in yoga, typically we assume that static stretching is the answer because if you look at a you know common yoga class almost every yoga class is essentially just a bunch of static stretching it's just an hour of static stretching yes there's some movement yes vinyasa is like one breath one movement at least that's how it's taught a lot of times in a lot of classes in a lot of places. However, generally speaking, we're pretty much just statically stretching. Come on, get off your high horse. That's really what it is. We can do better. We can do a lot better. Um, not only can we do better by getting other types of improvements to your health by not just focusing on static stretching, but we can actually get better flexibility. Just if, even if flexibility alone is your goal, we can do better than static stretching. Um, and we can, um, get more flexibility through other means that are better for other things as well. So static stretching, um, not the best option. The correct answer to this uh, quiz was, well, eccentric training. So eccentric, uh, eccentric just means that you are contracting your muscle as it gets longer. So you're using the muscle and it's getting long as it's working, okay? Meaning if I'm trying to stretch my hamstrings, I'm also working with my hamstrings at the same time. Like if you're doing a seated forward fold in yoga, uh, you're pressing your heels down into the ground so that your hamstrings are contracting. Now this is the opposite of what most yoga teachers in my experience teach, where most yoga teachers are relying on uh, this idea of reciprocal inhibition, that if you contract your quadriceps and hip flexors, that it'll help stretch your hamstrings more. Uh, so this is the opposite approach, okay? Is saying, well, no, let's actually contract the muscle that is being stretched. So let's look at some research to back this up. Here we are, we've got some original research. I'll link to it in the description below. Uh, the title is, a comparison of the immediate effects of eccentric training versus static stretch on hamstring flexibility in high school and college athletes. Wow, that is an informative title. Um, in this article, in this uh, trial, actually, they compared three groups and they wanted to see who had the best improvement in flexibility. The first group did static stretching of the hamstrings muscles for 30 seconds. The second group did five second intervals of eccentric stretching of the hamstrings muscle uh, under resistance and they did that six times for a total of 30 seconds. So each group had the same total duration of time uh, stretching their muscles, but one of them was staying still at end range and the other was eccentrically contracting into their end range. And the third group was a control group and they did nothing. So this was actually a, a pretty interesting um, randomized control trial. And essentially, uh, let's, before I show you how they did this, I want to just clear up some terms. So flexibility, the definition is uh, the ability of a muscle to lengthen or uh, allow one or more joints to move through a range of motion. So flexibility, all that means is your ability, uh, your body's ability to move through a range of motion. That's it. Uh, that That's it. So the static stretching that we do in yoga, um, let's give it a definition. So static stretching is defined as the elongation of a muscle to tolerance and sustaining that position for a length of time. So you stretch a thing until you feel it and then you hold it. 
Pretty simple. Now, it's important that they looked at this question of comparing static stretching to eccentric training because there is the misconception that static stretching is valuable for flexibility or that it's valuable for injury reduction risk uh, and that it's valuable for your athletic performance and overall health. I've talked about this extensively elsewhere. I'm not going to get into it, but it's important to note that we've learned a lot about static stretching in the last few decades, and uh, we've learned that static stretching is not an effective way to reduce injury rate, uh, rates and that it may actually inhibit athletic performance. It makes uh, your muscles weak. It reduces athletic um, performance by reducing power uh, and strength in muscles for up to 24 hours. There's plenty of research on that, so you just Google it. Uh, a better option for increasing fle flexibility might be that we basically, uh, I'm just going to sum this up, that we use the muscle while we stretch it. That's it. You just, you still lengthen the muscle. We're still technically stretching because the muscle is getting longer, but just use the muscle as it's getting longer. And we may have a better option for increasing flexibility and possibly for reducing injury risk because of that active component to the stretching. So... This study looked at 87 subjects. They randomized them into three groups, which I've already described. They used a goniometer, which is a little, um, it basically measures the angle of a joint. So this is the goniometer here. They used a standardized position where they stack the knee over the hip and then they um, slowly straighten the knee in order to find where this person is able to stretch their hamstrings to. And they measured that angle. That's uh, what they do with all the subjects uh, in order to see who um, they get their baseline. They, they test their flexibility once and then they do the stretching and then they test their flexibility again. Uh, as a reminder, the eccentric group performed reps. So here's how they did their reps. So they grabbed a strap. Hey, could be using a yoga strap here from a supine position. Yeah, getting ideas. And so you press your foot into this strap here. Um, I should start here. So they press the foot into the strap at um, when the muscle is not being stretched and then they resist. They use their arms to pull themselves into a stretch for the hamstrings, but they use the back of the leg, the hamstrings to resist that. So their arms are kind of, I don't want to say force, but they're, they are kind of providing a resistance as they pull themselves into a stretch using their arms and the strap, but the hamstrings mus muscles, which are being stretched, are resisting that. And they do it so that each rep from point A at the top to point B at the bottom takes five seconds. They do that six times, so they spend 30 total seconds stretching this muscle. The other group, the static stretching group, what they did was um, this right here. So all they did was put their foot on a chair and uh, lean in until they feel the stretch and then they hold that for 30 seconds. So both groups stay in their stretching um, activity for the same total duration However, one group just kind of leans in and then relaxes and, and just holds it. And the other group does eccentric um, contractions. And what we found is that the uh, group performing one bout of eccentric training showed a significantly greater gain in flexibility than the static stretching group. Both groups, however, did better than the control group. So that's important. So both methods, whether you're static stretching or eccentrically contracting, both groups did improve their flexibility, but the eccentric group actually did better than the static st uh, stretching group. So this calls into question the idea that static stretching is sort of the gold standard of flexibility training. Clearly it's not. So the additional um, outcome that the authors are interested in and I'm personally interested in is that it, perhaps this can also reduce injury rates. We don't know that. Um, it's, however, a good hypothesis, a very reasonable um, hypothesis. Uh, just, uh, just appeal to the said principle here, specific adaptation to impose demand, which would tell us that the more we do a specific thing, the better we get at doing that specific thing. And that we also know that most injuries happen in the eccentric phase of a contraction. So you jump off of something and you have to land and catch yourself. Your muscles are getting longer as they have to work really hard and that that's very difficult for muscles to do. And so they uh, that's when we tend to strain a muscle. So if we get better at lengthening a muscle as we contract it or contracting a muscle as we lengthen it, however you want to think about it, then we will perhaps 
reduce injury risk of eccentric strains, right? So it's a, at least a really reasonable hypothesis. Um, I haven't personally seen the research to support it yet, but it is a very, very reasonable hypothesis that it might reduce injury risks. So um, that's all I wanted to show you with this article. Let's get into a yoga pose that we can apply this goodness. All right, so here's an old one, but a good one from my Instagram. And uh, I'm here advising you, hey, don't stretch, eccentrically contract. So why would I say that? Well, I mean, we just looked at the research of why I would say that. But the simple thing is that yoga teachers tend to think about mobility. We want more and more and more and more of it. And so we, uh, when we think about that, we usually look at it as though, ah, let's just lengthen the muscles as much as we possibly can. Let's relax as much as we can so that the muscles are willing to, quote, relax into that range of motion and, quote, deepen our pose or, quote, soften <laughs> into it. I'm sorry. These are all ridiculous things. Not only are they ridiculous because they sound kind of silly, but they're ridiculous because they're actually not effective. They're just scientifically wrong. They're just mis mistakes and misunderstandings of how stretching works. So it turns out that when you contract a muscle as you're lengthening it, then your brain actually realizes, okay, it's cool guys. We have control over this range of motion. And then your brain is willing to actually let you go further because it trusts you versus relaxing into the uh, the pose. So I'm here advising that maybe instead of, for example, in this um, example, normally you would see that instead of lifting halfway, as I've done here with the arms lifted, most people would um, be doing a, a forward fold where their uh, arms are grabbing their big toes and they're pulling themselves down towards the ground to get as deep of a stretch as possible. First of all, that's silly because all you're doing is stretching your spine, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not your hamstrings. So if you're trying to increase hamstrings flexibility, stretching your spine doesn't necessarily help that, right? It just gives you the illusion of deeper flexibility without actually targeting the muscle you had in mind. So instead of doing a, you know, Uttanasana, a forward fold and forcing yourself into a deep passive uh, static stretch, I would advise, I don't even teach that. I don't teach passive forward folds. I don't teach passive stretching at all. I don't teach that in my yoga classes. What I would advise is that you have position one, which is right here where you're standing up and then position two. Oh, I said one again. Here's position two. Um, and you go from position one to position two and then back to position one. And you just do that over and over. And you do a few reps of that. So you start up top, you make yourself nice and tall, you send your booty backwards um, so that you can really load up the uh, posterior chain of muscles, that's your hamstrings, glutes, erectors, all that stuff. And then you slowly lower yourself in a controlled fashion to this half lift with your arms way out in front of you because that's gonna provide more resistance uh, that your muscles are gonna have to support. And then you go back, you stand back up nice and slowly as well. And then you slowly lower. Now, if you really wanted to make this an eccentric exercise, you would spend about, um, from position one to position two, you would spend about five seconds to get down. So you take the long way there and then you quickly get back. So you take the, you know, you take the one or two second, um, stand back up and then five to eight seconds as you lower halfway with your arms out in front of you. And then, you know, about two seconds to stand back up. So you're spending more time in the eccentric phase of the contraction. Cool. So this would be um, a really, really great way of increasing your flexibility if you want that. But it also has the added benefits of um, you have good neural control, motor control over your range of motion. You are in control rather than having gravity be in control. And there's a very, very good reason to believe that this might uh, help to reduce injury risks, um, and especially in the hamstrings, because the hamstrings are one of the most commonly strained muscles, period. So uh, I hope that gives you some ideas. You can apply this knowledge to any yoga pose at all. Um, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. So comment below and share your ideas for how you can apply eccentric training instead of static stretching to your yoga pose. Uh, ask me questions, uh, leave suggestions for future videos, uh, and uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, do all the things, and I'll see you in the next episode.